Who doesn't love a good April Fool's prank? I feel like video games and video game communities, we have such a, we have such a deep history of pranking and trolling each other. It's great. So let's take an opportunity to look back at some of the best April Fool's pranks in video game history. Okay, we're gonna go sneak up on Chriselle. It's gonna be so good. What, what are you doing? <laughs> Two years before Pokemon Go, the idea that you could go to real life locations and actually catch these, you know, digital monsters, these Pokemon on your smartphone or whatever, that shit was already done. It was done by Google. Scattered across the globe in specific locations, you could catch certain Pokemon from various generations, and it was really cool, it was so ahead of its time. This was such an elaborate prank, but do you know what? It got a lot of people using Google Maps. The amount of work that must have gone into this is kind of insane when you really think about it, because a lot of these Pokemon, their locations, they like, they made sense. You would go to, you go to Central Park in New York and you would catch, you know, certain grass type Pokemon. You go to the desert, you'll catch specific Pokemon there. Chandelure, the ghost chandelier Pokemon, you could catch at Area 51. If you were to catch all of the 151 Pokemon, then you would be awarded the title by Google of Pokemon Master. Anyone who actually caught all 151, give them that title. They earned that shit. <laughs> I am a huge fan of Final Fantasy Tactics, and also like the Game Boy spin-off games and the Nintendo DS spin-off game. They're just, they're so good, and it's been over 10 years since the last installment in the series. Until April 2017, Square Enix posted on their social media accounts a fake trailer for a game called Tactics Alexander that was basically a, a pseudo-sequel to Final Fantasy Tactics. It had like this cool pixel art style and it was supposed to come out on the Nintendo 3DS. And let me tell you, trolling fans with a fake Tactics game after it had been 10 years since the last installment, people were pissed. I would have bought the shit out of this game. It looked really cool. The fact that people were so pissed that this was fake, you think You'd think that Square Enix would have taken a hint. Hey, maybe we should make a new Final Fantasy Tactics game. But no, this one, this one was a heartbreaker. EGM or Electronic Gaming Monthly, that was like my go-to video game magazine back in the day. And back in April of 2002, they dropped, they dropped one of the worst April Fool's pranks ever. It was actually pretty great, but I say it's the worst because they got me good. They got me so good. Sonic and Tails in Smash Brothers Melee. And this one was so plausible, it was so believable. They had a screenshot and instructions on how to how to unlock them. Because if you look at the Melee character selection screen, there's like two empty slots on the bottom left and bottom right. I always thought that, man, those must be like some secret, super difficult to unlock characters. And when I saw this screenshot, I'm just like, oh, let's do this. You had to defeat 20 enemies in Cruel Melee which is like a super difficult, kind of like endless mode with consistent waves of enemies. And we didn't have a computer back then, like, we didn't know. Me and my brother, we spent hours playing Cruel Melee mode, trying to get to 20 to unlock Sonic and Tails. EGM, you got us good, you sons of bitches. <laughs> now, I don't know if this one should count, because it technically came true, it wasn't really fake, but We'll go ahead and we'll do it anyways because I said so, okay? April 2017, a fighting game developer called Arika put out a trailer for Fighting EX Lair. And Arika had been radio silent for years. Nobody heard of Arika since like the early 2000s when they were making Street Fighter EX and then Fighting Lair. No one had heard from these guys in so long. So when a trailer for Fighting EX Lair, a new fighting game came out on April 1st and it looked legit, People were so confused. People were so confused because it looked so real. It was so convincing. Someone had put serious work into making this fake fighting game. And it looked so real because it was. I can't believe a company would put out a trailer for a video game on April Fools, especially when it's like a return of a company that hasn't made a game in a long time. And fighting EX Lair, still going strong today, still putting out DLC and new characters. Really crazy story.
back in 2008, IGN put out a trailer for a fake Legend of Zelda movie. Thank God it was fake because it looked like ass. But man, let me tell you, I had never seen, before this, I had never seen an, an April Fool's prank quite on the same level of this. The, the amount of work that must have gone into making this trailer, like, yeah, it looks ghetto. But still, someone put a lot of work into this. The special effects, the costumes, these were hired actors. Clearly put money into making this trailer. This really is like the godfather of video game themed April Fool's pranks because I feel like I feel like this started a trend. I remember watching this when it first was put out back in 2008. I couldn't believe it. First, there was like a split second where I thought it was real, and I was kind of a little terrified because I'm like, oh. They're making a Zelda movie and it looks like ass. But after I realized it was fake, I was really, I was kind of impressed. Regardless, I thought it was super amusing and it totally started a trend. I feel like ever since this happened, video game themed kind of April Fool's pranks have just escalated over the years. And other companies have gone on to even like copy the same prank and make fake Zelda trailers of their own. I'm excited to see what's in store for April Fools this year and let me know what you guys think and if you like this video please hit that like button it really does help this channel a lot thanks for watching